Hey there, Jenna here. Welcome to my channel where I take you on tours of unique homes. Have you ever dreamed of living in a sleek, modern home straight out of a magazine, but for a fraction of the cost? Well, today we're traveling to a tiny house community in California where one tiny home builder has figured out exactly that. Inspired by modern mansions and five-star hotels, Nico's impressive tiny home does not lack in luxury. His home features clever space-saving designs, relaxing outdoor living areas, and it provides him with a life free from the stress of a mortgage. When people come, we want them to have the wow factor, like, oh wow, this house can be in Beverly Hills for like a million dollars almost, but it's not. It's right here in the tiny house community, because most people want that life, but they can afford it. And if you like videos like this, where we showcase amazing builds, make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you know every single time we publish a new video. Hi, I'm Nicola, and this is my house, Tiny Lux Life. I was born in France, my parents are Vietnamese, and I moved to America at 16. So at 16, I lived in Ohio for about 20 years. You have to have a place to stay. And most of the time you work just to pay for that. And I didn't want to do that anymore. I didn't want to stress anymore. After 20 years of stress, I decided to quit it and just start my life over. And I come from France, mortgage been dying more. It's like you, you're giving you, your life to this mortgage for 30 years and at the end of the, the, the month, you don't have anything left for you. So why not just have a house that's paid off and you can live in it. Be humble, live small. So a tiny house made it the best sense pretty much. When I built it, it was actually in 2017. So I did it myself. I was a contractor, I hired a team of two workers, and I pretty much designed the whole floor plan on my iPad. And then we just started to uh, buy the material. And I just bought a trailer, it was a 28 foot trailer by eight. Just a flat bed, so we just built from there. The idea was how can you make the house look luxurious, but still being small. The goal was to make this space like a five star hotel almost. Like you come into a five star hotel. How, how big is the hotel? It's not that big, but you still love it. Is it nice? Everything is modern, it's new. So why not make that into your house? And so when people come, I really want them to have the wow factor, like, oh wow, this house can be in Beverly Hills for like a million dollars almost, but it's not. It's right here in the tiny house community. Because most people want that life, but they can afford it. So it costs about under 100,000 to build a house. And it took about eight, eight to 10 months to build, pretty much. I found tiny house block. I found a spot here, so I decided to park it here. Now I'm happy. I have a house, I have a car. I have a job that I love to do and, and have my dog and that's it. Welcome to the tiny house. Come on in. So this is a living room. As you can see, everything is white and bright. All the lighting is uh, Philip Hue lights. So it's color and white. So you can just change the whole appearance of the, of the house. And everything is white. So whatever color you play with, the house becomes that color. You want a pink house? Here's some pink wall for you. And it works that way. And also the major thing in the house is those doors. Those bifold doors that actually close. So a lot of things here happen. So we have this table here that transforms, it like goes taller. It's also become four people table. You can put it outside, have dinner in it. Sometimes I put it here against this thing to be a desk. This is the TV here. And from here, I had a fireplace installed, which is like a ethanol fireplace. No other, so it's okay for indoor. Just gotta be careful for the flame, but it's just me and him, so we're pretty safe. And just light it up, we put the fluid in, light it up, it's just good. As you see here, this is like a sofa. You have storage under here. Right, putting the pillow out. He'll probably stay here and like see what happens. <laughs> Thanks, there you go. Come on. <laughs> so you can see here, I have storage. <laughs> so the bed comes out like this. Right here, there's some levers. You just grab this, pull it. It's like hydraulics. 
the bed won't hit the table because the legs are longer. But see how it was done like to the inch because this bar right here, look, it just touched the fireplace. Barely goes down here. And this is the bed, queen bed. Pretty comfortable because you have a 13 feet high ceiling. So it looks like you're in a big, real big room when you're laying down. And the AC unit right here, the thing that I hate about tiny home or like those mini split is seeing this white unit. They're just like, like ugly, you know? So what I did was hit it behind a panel there so you don't see it. That's it, simple. Because everything around the bed, use it as cabinets. So everything you see is storage. And one thing I feel like it's important to have in a house is like electric blinds. This really add the luxurious to your house somehow. Just having those electric blinds that just move down and just close everything down. And it's blackout, so it gets dark inside. All right, that's it for the living room. Now let's go look at the kitchen. First, we'll start with the countertop. We have this like waterfall drop that's going on there. That's why I always like this modern look. That's what I've seen in every video or magazine that I've seen for like mansion or like expensive homes. They all have like white countertop and this kind of style. As you can see, there's no outlet unless you look cl closely here. It's blocked up right here. So you push it, you have three prongs, you can plug out of here, charge your phone or do whatever here and hide it up. So the goods will be minimalist and put away what you have already. So all those cabinets here don't have handles because I don't like the look of handles and I feel it's more slick when there's nothing. But now you'd be like, you're gonna say, how do you open it? So each of them has a way to open. Most of the time will be on the side, you just push the corner, it will just open up. So with this house, I decided to go with this Kohler sink that has compartment. You have a cutting board that comes with it. All those came with it. You have like those things here. So as you wash your dishes, you can just let them let you dry and put them away. And I went with the matte black finish. Everything is the same color. There's a water filter here connected to like reverse osmosis. Get water from there. And I have a wheel exhaust fan here. So actually when you cook, everything goes out. And with this setup, I went with this uh, induction top because I, I like it's easy to clean. So it's just easy to clean. I use it a few times. And you can make a lot of meals, like anything you need. So here you still have more pantry cabinets. You know, there's like one, two, three, full shelf. You can put stuff in. It's pretty deep. You have this much depth to put stuff in pretty much. And here too, so when I go in, actually, when I come in the house, I come to this one first. My jacket here, my hat here, and so the cabinet behind here as well. So then coming here, you have cabinet here for pantry, but you stuff here. This one, you push this, it opens up like this. You have oven, air fryer that does everything. And they have more storage here. And also here if we have the combo washer and dryer. It just saves more room just having one unit to do everything than having a stackable or not having one. So now it's like, you really have everything you need in this house to be to be like living in a regular apartment. And the fridge here, so this fridge is so kind of unique because it was really hard to find a fridge that has the same design, meaning white and high gloss. So I was able to find this brand Bosch make this fridge, which is a glass top and it's coated white. And it has a big fridge here, I mean, for fridge for Dexter's carrot and green beans is always here. And then you have a freezer for a lot of things you can put here. So a lot of, there's some room here that I use for storage. Like I have um, chairs that I use for the table when I eat outside or over there with two people. I have two of those chairs that folds. Just put them away easily here. And at the end we have this big glass door that separates the kitchen from the bathroom. Big thick door that slides open. So this is a bathroom. I have this big mirror too that has the light around it so that we can see everything, all the detail on your face. It's great for makeup. I don't wear makeup, but for women, it's perfect. And then we move to the sink here. What I use with this sink here, I kind of combine the black from out there, the kitchen, and some chrome. Something particular about the, the faucet is you can spin the faucet 
and actually use it as a fountain to wash your face, uh, wash your mouth, or rinse your mouth. That way you don't need the cup or anything else, you just do that. It's pretty, it's pretty simple, pretty neat. I don't know why nobody does that. And then next we come to the toilets. The toilet is probably the most expensive part of the house, almost. It was like close to $5,000. It came from uh, Europe. It is an incinerator toilet. So pretty much what it does is uh, it burns your poop. There's no water. I went with this toilet because most toilet, you're gonna need a, um, a black water, a black uh, tub as well in your, in, your, in your house, which is heavier and more nasty. That's why I, don't want, I didn't want to deal with that. So what I've done was get an incinerator toilet, which just burn you, you, you poop and then become ashes. And when it's done, you take it out from the tray here, pull it out, empty it outside. There's no odor, no smell. And the way it works is almost like a coffee filter. So you come here, you, you, take, a, you take a filter, <laughs> you open it up, and you just slide it in here. Most composting toilet I didn't like was you have to empty it like every week or whatever. It was like, I don't wanna do that. They will like poop, you know? So that's why I got this. It cost it more money, we made more sense. One with a bathtub here, it has maybe some functionality as well. It's a whirlpool, it has multiple jets and lights, light therapy as well. And then right here, you're gonna also gonna see a rain shower that's just gonna be falling down. You have the ability to do the rain shower or the one there. And then moving along, the storage here, plenty of storage in this house. As you open the cabinet here, you're gonna see storage here for like coats or whatever. And behind this, uh, this panel actually, when you take everything out, this is where the utility room is. Is where everything is, uh, the electric panels, the water gallon tank and everything is here. It's a little hidden. This is this side of the cabinet and the other side is right here. Another storage here. You have drawers to open up, to put your stuff, jacket. So I feel like the most storage and most apartments sometimes. So right here is the control panel of the house pretty much. Because this house was intended to be like a smart home. You can have Alexa or whatever other software you use to control the house with the lights. You can also do it manually with the iPad that is here. So the iPad will control the blind also, the lights. So right here with the control, you have all your lighting system here on this panel. And then we will lower down here, we have this thing here, which is the best door for Dexter. So each time I don't want to get up and open the door for him, he needs to go out, just go by himself, goes out and come back in and his boy is here, that's what he needs. Also, you might see how you got to the left, right? There's no ladder. <laughs> so that's the next part. This ladder here is a telescopic ladder. It's magnetic. I come up here to do some work sometime. I have my iMac and I can edit video. And also there's a day bed here. You can just lay down and, and take a nap if you wanted to. And also I put like this nice, hairy, white, soft fur here that is really comfortable to like lay on so i also like those long windows that we here that you can see everything pretty much all three angles we have this door also here that open up to the rooftop you can just get out straight out from here all right so we're on a rooftop on this rooftop i decided to have a rooftop deck because i want to be able to use some more space using the, the top of the tiny house most people usually do a roof that is slanted because they worry about the water being stuck or whatever snow, so I didn't care too much because I felt like it's such a small, small width, only eight feet wide that I didn't have any issues. It's been six years that it has been built and no issue with the rain or, or leakage, so it worked. Also what I've done was um, I had this uh, welded actually, custom welded, those railing, that actually falls down, collapses down, so that we can actually move the house. And I can come here in the morning as I wake up do some stretches, do some Tai Chi, more sure, and then some yoga. And at the end, I just meditate on this chair right here. Just a chair, I just sit down and meditate for like 20 minutes or whatever long. Because when you're here, you're just with nature. You have all those trees around you. And everywhere you look, there's going to be trees. So that's why it feels this energy every time you come up here. And that's why I say this is my favorite spot, to be up here, up high. The deck here is pretty important to the house too because 
I went with a design where you can actually remove the deck and take it with you. This is the third time I moved the house and the deck's still here. It still looks good, you know? So the deck, you can connect them to each other. It's a system that allows you to raise the deck or make it lower, it's up to you. So what I've done here was have it raised two, two feet high here outside of the uh, living room. So they have this big space. And we did this slat design here for privacy and also to, uh, to get the sun out. So when you come down here, there's a lower, the lower deck, I call it. So you have all this section here. And I come here usually to work out. I have all my, my gear right here, actually. I have storage under the deck. So the good thing with the deck, actually, have two feet high by, so 10 feet by 12 of storage underneath. So all of this is storage. So I have like dumbbells, like workout gear, and also a chair here, another chair to meditate. <laughs> Hello, meditation. You gotta find a spot to meditate the right way. Sometimes I come here and I can listen to the birds. I have a little fountain here that makes a little bit of sound. I created a little Japanese garden. In the back there, I have a mokchang, which is a uh, wood dummy that you use for martial art. So that here we have ladders, like railing that I did here to allow you to actually jump up here. I made a longer bar here so I can go up there and do pull-ups. So as you climb up here, you can go up and go to the roof as well. Life shouldn't be about going to work and make money and pay rent. I feel like life should be about finding something that you love and, and just go for it and have fun. And this is what I'm doing now because I, I couldn't find myself before because I was too stuck. Now I'm, I'm more free so I have time to actually find what I want to do, what I love, use your time into doing creative things and be more into uh, finding yourself. It's mindful living, intentional. Everything has a purpose. Thanks for watching this week's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you'd like to see more tours from this tiny house community, we will have them linked in the description. And I will see you soon with another unique home tour.